Uh, just for a moment, Holger, maybe you could take us back to the time when, as you say, CAM first came aboard, CKUA began with classical programming, still very near and dear to his heart. Uh, do you get any sense that there was uh, there were, were, were any eyebrows raised by uh, this this young fellow who came in? Rather, a, uh, I guess, a, maybe not the picture of a, of a classical music DJ. What, what did he look like when he first began here? <laughs> well, Cam's appearance has changed quite a bit because uh, back then he was a biker, still is, and he had a very loud bike and he was a burly looking guy. I love that story about uh, uh, when he was doing the morning show at CKUA, uh, as you recognize, uh, I think it was about 4.30 in the morning that he would, uh, he'd have to make his way downtown. And during the summer, he'd be on his Harley. And he, would uh, at that time, was living on the south side. So he'd come roaring through the River Valley, I think down 98th Avenue, every morning about 4.30, making his way to CKUA. So one morning, uh, the cops pulled him over. <laughs> and they said, uh, what do you do? I work at CKUA. Um, do you come by here every day at 4.30? Yes. Well, uh, we've had complaints from all the people in this River Valley about this <laughs> Harley roaring through here at 40, 4.30 in the morning and waking everybody up, and they've uh, called the cops, and we suggest you take an alternate route. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about when Cam Hayden first walked through these doors? Cam was, a, was, was uh, somebody that became a friend very quickly, and... Uh, 40 years ago, uh, he was doing the uh, classical music show. That's what he started doing. And uh, then uh, fairly quickly started doing the uh, the morning show. Back then, CKUA actually had a baseball team. We had a CKUA baseball team, and uh, Cam and I played on the team, so uh, we would socialize a lot that way and wow. uh, go out uh, afterwards, and we actually played a few tournaments in Red Deer and in Edmonton. How, how did you do? Were you all right? <laughs> uh, oh, I think we were all right, yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the team? Uh, it went through a couple of changes, but uh, the, the Natural Blues was the name of the team the last uh, few years, and... and uh, uh, we had uh, Natural Blues uh, shirt. Can you describe what it was like to meet Cam in 1978? In retrospect, uh, his interest in music is very, very broad. Mm -hmm. Even though people think of him as a blues broadcaster, uh, as I said, he started off doing classical music and, and had a real wide range of, of music interests and to this day still does. Uh, I've had the honor and pleasure of uh, traveling with Cam to uh, places like Negril, uh, Jamaica. Uh, we've also been in most of the great southern cities together at one point or another, including uh, New Orleans at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Um, also uh, Memphis uh, several times. We usually run into each other and get together in Memphis at the Memphis Blues Awards uh, every May. Uh, we've also been in other cities together, um, including uh, Toronto, I think, at the Maple Blues Awards and things like that. And I'm very proud to be a friend of Cam's. I love the way he programs the Blues Festival because he shows so much respect for the uh, elder blues artists. And were it not for Cam, there are so many people that we wouldn't see, wouldn't have seen uh, on stage uh, in this province. Uh, people like Ruth Brown, for example, or, you know, Lazy Lester or Pine Top Perkins. Um, uh, I remember that one year when we had uh, Lonnie Brooks and Long John Hunter uh, and uh, some of the other Louisiana guys here. Um, just brilliant programming, you know, combining uh, new Canadian up-and-coming artists like the 24 Street Whalers, for example, or Monkey Junk and, and the veterans and uh, the staples of the, the blues scene. Working with Cam over the years at uh, on the fundraisers has been uh, an absolute ball, and I think that's when we've spent a lot of time together talking about our favorite artists. Um, you know, those have just been great golden moments for me because you're telling stories about, you know, meeting artists or your favorite records uh, and that sort of thing. So I've always appreciated uh, all the uh, the shifts that uh, Cam and I have done during the fundraisers. Why is it that both you and Cam have been able to do this uh, so very well and, and been, been so well supported for so long? Well, I guess we both love the music, as you do, um, and that's where it really starts. 
And it's that desire to always know more, to dig deeper, to listen to new music, uh, to get into the uh, reissues, to read about artists, to get to know artists, uh, in your case and me, the odd time, to be able to play drums with <laughs> artists. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it certainly starts with the love of it and the respect uh, for the music. I think the music always comes first, you know. Uh, what we do is, is um, uh, serve the music. Have you got any uh, words of advice for a young buck who's just getting started and is only 40 years into his <laughs> broadcasting career at CKU? <laughs> Good question. Um, I don't. I think Cam does a, a great job at what he does. Um, part of your wallpaper, you're part of your life when you hear Cam's voice on Friday nights. It's the world seems fine, you know. It's <laughs> it's the way it should be. Uh, Cam Hayden's voice, the wonderful distinctive voice playing blues and and uh, playing blues with uh, enthusiasm with authority with knowledge and uh, deep respect all that that entails well holger has been really awesome sharing these <laughs> memories with you thank you and happy cam hayden day yes and uh, uh cam i'm really sorry i'm not with you uh, i'm in mexico uh, this december the 7th and uh uh, I'm sure you're going to have a great time, and uh, I know you're surrounded by a lot of people that really care about what you do. So thank you, Cam, for what you do. I'm sure Cam enjoys that you're out there hoisting a pina colada for him. 